thanks very much for attending, everybody. Um, so my name is uh, Julian Chesterfield, and uh, I'm going to talk today uh, about uh, a project um, that, that ONAP is participating in. It's, uh, it's actually part of a, uh, an EU-funded project called ActiCloud uh, with a number of partners. And in particular, I'm going to talk about uh, the partnership that we have with uh, Kaleo, which is a, uh, a Cambridge-based startup. Uh, one of the founders of which is uh, Professor John Goodacre, who's uh, uh, well known to many arm folk here, I'm sure. And uh, I'm going to be talking about the, uh, the co-design that we've been working on, uh, particularly on the, the Kaleo platform, around uh, multi-tenancy uh, virtualization support on, uh, on low-power uh, ARM-based server uh, architecture. And uh, this is joint work with uh, members of my team, uh, and uh, you know, this, uh, some of their names are here, and uh, they're, they're also uh, attending today as well. So in particular, the, the Active Cloud project, uh, just to give a little context, is uh, focused on uh, combating resource underuse in cloud data centers. Um, and uh, the, the, the purpose of the project is to identify um, efficient workload placement policies in uh, emerging uh, cloud uh, server architecture systems. Uh, and there's two particular types of systems that we're focusing on. It's uh, scale-up systems and uh, scale-out, uh, both of which use uh, aggregated uh, data center server resources. And so, so the two hardware partners in particular that we're working with are NumaScale, uh, who build a, uh, a very large distributed scale-up system uh, that uses uh, a, uh, a, a, a special hardware component that allows you to take uh, discrete um, commodity servers uh, and essentially build a, a large distributed NUMA, uh, a single um, memory addressable uh, system. And uh, Kaleo that is focusing on the, uh, the scale-out uh, share-nothing architecture um, which uh, will, uh, in the future, be looking towards uh, something called Unimem, uh, which is the ability to borrow memory uh, from, uh, from different discrete uh, compute components. The, uh, the, the system isn't, the Unimem isn't, isn't currently available, so I won't be talking about that today, uh, but I will say a little bit about the, uh, the, the Cleo system architecture. So, so the ONAP focus in particular is at the software layer, uh, so our background is in virtualization. Uh, some of us were formerly part of the, uh, the, the Zen um, uh, development team uh, here in Cambridge. Um, and uh, the, the work that we're doing at ONAP is focusing in particular on uh, building a, a much more efficient um, multi-tenancy virtualization system that is optimized towards low power ARM um, infrastructure particularly focusing around minimizing virtualization overhead. So we focus a lot particularly on the, the IO layer, the IO subsystem. And one of the particularly interesting things about this project is actually the, uh, the interrelationship between uh, the, the standard uh, system virtualization software technology and the, uh, the integrated uh, FPGA acceleration components, uh, which allows us to build this sort of hybrid uh, software-defined hardware system. So where we can actually use software control for, for controlling a lot of components, uh, but we can actually accelerate the access and the data path in the FPGA itself. Um, and as part of this work, we've developed a clustered hypervisor architecture um, that allows us to scale to much larger orders of magnitude than is uh, common today. There's a number of uh, partners involved in this project as well, uh, included here. So, um, as I mentioned, uh, this kind of shows for the, uh, for the Active Cloud uh, project, uh, the, the relationship between the, uh, the different partners working on this project. Uh, as I say, there's the, the, the two hardware partners who are, uh, who are providing the, the different types of um, aggregated server resources at the bottom end, uh, ONAP uh, focusing around the, the multi-tenancy layer, and then we have uh, various uh, application use case providers as well at the top. So the uh, Kaleo compute node, which I'll talk about mostly in this talk, um, is, is a, a new type of uh, server architecture. It's, it's a custom-built uh, PCB board, uh, and it comprises uh, four discrete uh, Exynos uh, ARM-based uh, processors uh, with some centralized I.O. resources. So, so this is key uh, to, to the architecture, and in particular to the, the scalability of the overall system. It's, it's a very small compute board, uh, and as part of this, 
um, we're able to achieve extremely high levels of density uh, in the server system. It's a, it's a low power board uh, with hardware accelerated I.O. So all of the, so the FPGA components here, um, is it that one? There we go. The, the FPGA components here, this is the, the, the network FPGA um, that controls all of the uh, external uh, network I.O. Uh, this board has uh, dual uh, 10 gig Ethernet uh, external ports. Uh, and then uh, the uh, storage, um, <coughs> a storage FPGA here uh, that controls access to the uh, direct attached uh, flash storage on the board itself. So each compute node uh, has, uh, has its own I.O. resources uh, shared across the, uh, the, the, the four discrete um, ARM CPU uh, sockets. The, the system, uh, the, the, the KMAX system is, um, as I mentioned, it's, it's, it's a very dense system. So each, uh, each chassis has a, a number of blades associated with it, up to 12. Uh, and each blade can hold four compute nodes um, with some integrated uh, network components here as well. So each blade has a, uh, an integrated uh, 10 gigabit switch. Uh, with uh, 40 gig uh, uplink ports uh, to the front of the chassis, uh, which, which allows it to, to achieve a very high level of density. Um, just to give you an idea of that, one uh, 3U chassis uh, can contain 12 blades, which in turn uh, can host uh, 48 compute nodes uh, and therefore 192 discrete servers executing on the system. Um, and, uh, there, there are full specs available. If you go to the, 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 the Kaleo website, uh, you can get access to all this information. Um, there's, uh, it's a very dense, very uh, high throughput system uh, that can support uh, a lot of parallel I.O. and a lot of, uh, a lot of parallel processing. So what are the challenges with the software system in particular? Um, <clears throat> so, so each compute node board uh, has these uh, discrete um, uh, sockets that, that, uh, that can host a, uh, a cache coherent uh, system. Uh, and then we have shared I.O. resources on the side here uh, that we need to be able to coordinate, to control, and to map I.O. to the individual systems that execute. Uh, and as part of this, we're, we're building a, a multi-tenancy system, which gives us the flexibility to deploy and configure resources uh, using you know, standard virtualization techniques to take advantage of um, you know, uh, dedicated resources, you know, isolated CPU and memory access, um, and also uh, over committing of resources for, uh, for, for instances that require it. As part of this framework, we also have a lot of very fine-grained control over the, 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 the types of execution environment uh, that, that we provide uh, for every, uh, potentially on, on a per core basis. Um, so we can configure different types of scheduling algorithms, for example, to execute across different physical cores. And then tying this together, uh, there's some software control. So this is a, uh, this is a Zinc uh, FPGA um, that has a, uh, an embedded uh, A9 processor as well uh, that allows us to, to provide a certain amount of control running in software that we can then configure uh, runtime uh, parameters for, for I.O. channels uh, that are exposed to the, to the Exynos processors. So in the storage case, for example, um, we, have, we have a full software-defined storage stack that executes across each of these uh, A9 processors, of which there are, are many across the whole system. Um, and uh, we're able to configure uh, and, and to carve up the, the, the physical storage resources uh, and create a, a fully uh, fault tolerant, uh, highly available distributed uh, block storage uh, system across this infrastructure. Um, this is actually something that, you know, it's actually technology that, that ONAP um, have had for a number of years. We've actually, we've, we've always implemented this in software. Uh, one of the interesting challenges here has actually been uh, figuring out how to uh, how to, to, to modify that technology and uh, to be able to, to offload parts of that into the I.O. data path. So we actually use a protocol called uh, ATA over Ethernet uh, that allows us to, uh, to, to, to very efficiently transmit uh, block I.O. Ethernet frames uh, and convert those 
in, uh, uh, in line uh, in the data path, uh, actually, and, and map you know, through, through the programmable logic directly onto the, to the physical storage drives. Um, which is what we define as a software-defined hardware. <clears throat> so, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the slide just just to illustrate that, uh, you know, what we're dealing with here is is something that that I would consider to be an emerging theme. So, we're not the only people who are sort of looking in this space. It's actually quite a common sort of emerging architecture that we're seeing, where um, and we we heard a presentation from uh, Noah at uh, Cambridge University in an earlier session today. Uh, talking about the CAN-D system, which is a similar sort of concept. The idea that uh, we have centralized I.O. resources that are managed via sort of hardware interfaces uh, that allow us to map uh, I.O. resources to individual uh, non-cache coherent endpoints, so shared I.O. resources across multiple endpoints um, with some sort of embedded uh, PCI or fiber fabric. In the KMAX case, uh, this, is, this is an embedded uh, uh, PCI uh, bus, uh, but it could equally be uh, some other type of fast interconnect. Um, systems such as the, uh, the, the Facebook Yosemite architecture are um, uh, you know, a very similar sort of, sort of approach, um, and I think we've heard of, of other systems today as well uh, that, are, that are taking a similar idea. And, and I would argue that you know, this is a sort of similar problem that we see with, or uh, a, a similar trend that we're seeing with uh, protocols such as NVMe over Fabric, uh, where we have a very fast uh, Fabric um, uh, interconnect that allows us to distribute physical storage resources, uh, but to be able to access them in hardware uh, at, at a very fast rate. So some of the challenges around uh, you know, supporting multi-tenancy on, on ARM systems. Um, we consider it uh, extremely important to have multi-tenancy support. I think it, it, it is as important, if, if not more important, on uh, these, uh, these low resource systems, uh, the, these you know, smaller uh, low power devices on, on ARM as it is on Intel. Uh, and in particular, it's, it's crucial to be able to you know, very efficiently utilize the hardware resources. So typically these systems are much more memory limited. Um, they, they have uh, less, uh, less physical core and uh, processing capability available. Um, and uh, we also want to be able to, uh, to, to be able to leverage things such as the, uh, the, the trusted workload execution framework uh, through the, the ARM trust zone technology. Uh, and also, um, you know, looking towards, uh, you know, uh, efficient application isolation for systems such as uh, unikernels as well. Um, the ARM CPU architecture is actually very well suited to Zen, um, and I would uh, draw your attention to uh, the, the Christopher, Christopher Dahl paper, which actually uh, gives uh, a very interesting uh, breakdown of some of the, uh, the performance benefits of the, the ARM architecture over Intel. Um, however, uh, one of the conclusions of the paper, which is something that we absolutely concur with, is that um, it, it's very important on the ARM architecture to be able to minimize uh, the, the, uh, the, the utilization of the system for, for system management overhead, and in particular to minimize the context switch overhead <clears throat> that, is, uh, uh, that, that is one of the challenges with, with the virtualization system. So as part of this, uh, this, this work, we've been revisiting some uh, I.O. architectural assumptions uh, for this system. So, so you know, a, a common hypervisor architecture uh, would be that, uh, you know, we have a, uh, you know, it, this is focusing on the, the Zen system in particular. Uh, we have a type 1 hypervisor layer that sits at the lowest level of the stack. Um, uh, and, and then we have a control management domain that, uh, that handles the uh, I.O. multiplexing for all the, the, the para-virtualized I.O. resources. Um, and uh, it, it is responsible for, for ensuring that, um, uh, that, that, the, uh, that the, the, the physical hardware I.O. is, is efficiently uh, presented to, to the guest virtual machines. So in the ARM case, um, there's a significant amount of overhead incurred by uh, processing uh, para-virtualized I.O. queues from a guest, uh, context switching into the, to the host domain, which uh, executes in uh, EL1 uh, kernel space. 
uh, and then uh, multiplexing the I.O. onto the, uh, the, the device driver interfaces. So we wanted to revisit some of these assumptions. Um, in particular, we want to minimize the I.O. processing, uh, the, the overhead. Um, we wanted to minimize the, the resource footprint uh, to make sure we use as little memory uh, and uh, uh, system resource uh, as possible. Also take into account the FPGA I.O. offloading capability. Um, and be able to, to bring in the, the hyper-converged system uh, management resources uh, and to be able to leverage the, the direct attached storage resources and, uh, and also the, the, the network control uh, that we have through the, the FPGA interfaces. Uh, and also be able to, to scale to uh, much larger uh, amounts than, than we do typically today. In the, the, the Cleo system example, um, uh, you know, a single rack of uh, KMAX systems can hold up to uh, 2,700 uh, discrete server uh, um, uh, systems. So we need to make sure that the, the orchestration framework associated with that is able to manage and control multiple racks of these types of resources. <clears throat> so the approach that we've taken is to uh, create a, a, a much more efficient uh, VMM layer that is optimized towards the architecture. So we've essentially moved a lot of the components that are common in the virtualization framework into the, uh, the, the type one uh, VMM layer, which executes in EL2. Um, and as part of that, we've had to move the, um, we've had to create a, a, a software packet switch architecture into the VMM layer. So essentially we're terminating paravirtual IO queues which, uh, which terminate in the, uh, the para-virtualized backend logic that executes within the VMM. Uh, and this has the ability to efficiently map uh, the, the IO resources directly onto the, the, the DMA engines of the, uh, of the interface, the, the device driver interfaces. Uh, as part of this, we've also had to move quite a bit of the, uh, the virtualization control logic. So if you're familiar with the Zen architecture, uh, components such as the, the, the Zen bus and uh, Zen store interfaces, uh, which, are, which are sort of a, a standardized interface. Uh, we've had to implement uh, quite a bit of that in, in the VMM layer itself. Um, we actually with, with uh, significant benefits. So we actually find that the instantiation performance for, uh, for, for large numbers of VMs is a lot quicker. I'll show some results in a short while. Uh, it's a lot quicker when there's actually no uh, context switch overhead again and the, the, the delay associated with setting up uh, para-virtualized IO queues and so on. Um, and, and as part of this, we've also implemented a uh, software-defined network layer, which allows us to create uh, encapsulated um, uh, virtual networks above this physical interface as well. Um, <clears throat> so... Um, yeah, so, so I think this, this, this covers pretty much what I said, uh, just with the exception of, you know, as part of this, we also have to move some of the, the control interface also into this layer because we need to be able to remotely manage these, uh, these components. Um, at, the, uh, at the FPGA level, um, we also have logical components that allow us to create virtualized I.O. resources. Uh, and to be able to map those dynamically at runtime to the uh, virtualization layer. So in the KMAX case, uh, this sits above a, uh, a PCI embedded fabric. Um, and uh, as I mentioned before, uh, particularly for storage, uh, we use a, a very lightweight uh, ATA over Ethernet protocol that allows us to map, uh, in this case here, We've got a, a, an integrated uh, block I.O. and network handling logical layer that allows us to map um, virtual block I.O. requests directly onto Ethernet frames, um, which, which we map through the uh, ATA over Ethernet protocol. Um, and, and, and having the software control at this level also allows us to do uh, you know, replication, mirroring, uh, fault tolerance uh, through the programmable logic of the, the FPGA fabric as well. Um, <clears throat> uh, sitting above this is the, 
the, the management layer, which is uh, a modified uh, OpenStack infrastructure. So OpenStack itself doesn't scale particularly well to this sort of infrastructure. Um, so, so one of the key things that we've designed in here is this ability to, 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 to create essentially uh, clustered pools of resources uh, that we present to the orchestration layer. Uh, and we have a lot of levers that we can pull here to determine at what level we aggregate data, both for, for management, control, and also for uh, collecting uh, statistics and, and monitoring data. Um, it's, it's designed to, to be able to scale uh, and uh, you know, aggregate data through, uh, across many uh, components uh, distributed across the system. Um, and then, of course, at the user interface level, there's also challenges around how do you manage this sort of scale of infrastructure. So we've been playing with some, some novel ways of presenting and managing uh, infrastructure. And in particular, for, um, for production systems, uh, it's, it's crucial to be able to have um, visualization and understanding around uh, fault-tolerant zones uh, you know, distributed across a data center. So for example, uh, you've got uh, you know, clustered resources that are distributed across multiple racks, um, and uh, we can create uh, pools of resources that are fault tolerance domains, essentially. So we have uh, virtual machine workloads executing uh, in, uh, in, in this uh, physical resource, for example, uh, with, a, with a failover tolerance domain uh, that allows us to, uh, to bring up resources across different uh, pool, different physical infrastructure. So I'm uh, running out of time here. So I'll just very quickly show some performance results. Uh, first of all, the, uh, the memory footprint, of course, is significantly reduced. So this is a big win, uh, particularly for the, the ARM base, for the, for the uh, uh, Samsung Exynos uh, processor, which is you know, quite memory limited. Um, secondly, uh, I mentioned that the, 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 the orchestration uh, setup time for, for actually uh, bootstrapping guests is uh, significantly improved as well. Uh, because we've moved all the control components into the, uh, the EL2 layer directly. Um, so we see that the, the, the setup time uh, scales extremely nicely. The, uh, the, the, the performance is, is significantly improved over a standard uh, Zen system running on the same architecture. Um, the, the network I.O. latency in particular is something that we've focused on. So these results were gathered actually on uh, so some X-Gene boards. So this was before we, we actually had the, the, the latest KMAX system. Um, but we did so, some measurements here around uh, comparing a, a, a standard uh, virtual machine running on Zen on the same uh, hardware, uh, comparing against uh, the, the virtualized I.O. path uh, using our uh, modified uh, Zen Lite hypervisor, um, and also comparing that against uh, the, uh, the, the, the comparison point here is a, a solar flare NIC uh, where we map uh, virtual functions directly through to guest VMs. So we're essentially comparing uh, bare metal uh, you know, PCI access support in a guest against the, the para-virtualized uh, optimized I.O. path um, that, that we've measured on our system. And we can see that the, the difference there is, is negligible. Uh, same thing here for uh, cross-node, so inter-node uh, measuring, measuring performance over the, the, the physical network. Um, and uh, we, we see that the, uh, the, the performance uh, measured within a, uh, a bare metal guest here, uh, the, the, the control domain, uh, compares uh, extremely favorably with, the, uh, with our um, virtualized guest uh, performance uh, as opposed to a, to a, uh, a standard uh, virtual machine measurement here. Uh, and then finally, we also did some measurements of a, uh, a, a, a unikernel framework. So this was measuring... Uh, the performance of a Redis workload, um, and we compared, uh, this is normalized results, we compared here against uh, the, the stock um, virtual machine, uh, and then running, uh, this is a rump kernel based uh, unikernel, uh, measuring here on a standard Zen, uh, and then the same unikernel executing on our uh, optimized I.O. framework. And the performance is um, significantly better, um, uh, about uh, 30 to 50% improvement. Um, so in summary, 
um, the, the Active Cloud project uh, is uh, something that we're participating in, and uh, in particular, we're investigating efficient use of resources in emerging scale-up and scale-out architecture systems. In this talk, I focused on the, uh, the, the Kaleo KMAX hardware, and in particular, the modifications or revisions that we've made to the, uh, the virtualized I.O. architecture um, in order to uh, reduce the, uh, the, the resource utilization um, and to significantly improve performance. Um, and uh, I've uh, mentioned briefly a little bit about the work that we're doing around uh, aggregation of resources and in particular building uh, clustered units of resource uh, that allow us to scale the, the orchestration framework significantly. So thanks very much, and I'm uh, happy to take questions. Thank you.